one of the things that can happen to you with money is, is you can get to a place where you decide you can buy your way out of anything, but you can't buy your way out of death and you can't buy your way out of the judgment that's coming that all men are going to have to stand before God and answer for the life that they've lived. I'm reading James chapter five, verse one this morning. He says, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. So uh, he's, he's issuing a warning to wealthy unbelievers. He says, you, you've heaped all this treasure up here on this earth, but misery is coming for you. Uh, he goes on to say, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. So their time here has been a time of pleasure, but they've fattened themselves up for a day of slaughter. This is a warning. It's a warning that sounds just like something that Isaiah or Jeremiah would issue, like an Old Testament prophet. And it's, it's a warning that needs to be heeded. So let's think about a couple of examples. The rich man and Lazarus. That was what the rich man was like. He didn't repent and he wound up in hell. The parable that Jesus tells of the wealthy man who had a bumper crop, didn't have enough barns to store it. So he tore them down, built bigger barns. And then he said, I said to my soul, sit back, soul, you rest, eat and drink. You, you got many things stored up for years to come. And the Lord said, you fool, this very day your soul is required of you. So, so he died and he was expecting a long life. He was expecting all of this pleasure in life. And he thought he had everything taken care of. But what he hadn't taken care of was eternity, you see. Now let's contrast that with what could happen. Let's talk about a guy named Zacchaeus. He heard that Jesus was in town. He couldn't see for the crowd. So he crawled up in a sycamore tree Jesus walked right up to him and said, Zacchaeus, come down for I'm going to your house today. And Zacchaeus repented and he trusted in Christ. Jesus said today, salvation has come to this house. And Zacchaeus' whole attitude toward wealth and money and all of those things changed. He went from being a cheat and a fraud, a taker to being a giver. He went from being somebody who trusted in himself and his, his cleverness and his wealth to someone who trusted in Jesus. He went from somebody who took these things from other people to somebody who used the things that God had given him to bless other people. And Zacchaeus says that in his own uh, testimony there in the book of Luke. Now, here's the, the, the thing. This is talking about the return of Jesus. And he says, you know, all of this, this, this wealth that has been amassed on this earth, the moths are gonna eat it, uh, the, the rust is gonna, gonna rust it and canker it. It's going to do you no good in the day of judgment. So the Bible tells us what a wealthy Christian ought to do. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with a Christian having wealth. Uh, what's wrong is this terrible view that these people here in James have of wealth. He says in 1 Timothy 6, 17, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good and that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And there it is, the, the, the fraud and the deceit of the people in here that James talks about. We see it every day. We see it in our country. We see it around the world. Um, some of us have been hurt by these things. We've, had our, we've been those laborers who have had our hire held back. What do we do about that? Well, we trust God because he's going to make all things right. But what about, what about the person who's involved in that now? Well, repent and trust in Christ. And for those of us who do have money in this life, use it to do good. But don't trust in wealth. Trust in Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.